Okay, so this is the T-71. Um, tier 7 American light tank. Looking at this game, we have got lots more heavies than them, so I'm expecting them to all head off to the town sort of F9 zone. Uh, my job early on as the light tank, sneaky little scout bastard, is to whip up to the back of the ridge behind the uh, road there, across the middle, get some spots in. Now, I did watch a video by a guy called Lemming Rush who told me about a um, a building to knock down and a tree to knock down so that you could then get shots down into the town later. However, I get here and I've forgotten which building and tree it is. I'm get spotted anyway because they counter scouting, so I need to run away. Um, I do not want to get shot by that 4190 Grand Finals because he's got high penetration HE, which will wreck me big style. So, at the moment, float around a bit in the middle, keep moving, use my speed as my armour. Um, and looking at the mini map, all our heavies have gone the wrong way, which is a little bit disappointing. So, okay, what do we do? Keep the spots up. Um, yeah, two guys in town. Um, decided to go for the reload there. Unfortunately, got taken for 239 by the Indian Panzer, so running away from him, notice I ducked and weaved, ducked and weaved, you don't want to run away from people in a straight line and the light, it's easy for them to hit you, use your mobility. Uh, so there's not really much support behind me, everybody's cramming into two squares over on the wrong flank, um, I'm thinking this doesn't look too clever. So park up, do a bit of hiding, get a couple of sneaky shots into the 4190 there. Very damage really, very helpful, setting on fire, he's got an automatic fire extinguisher, that's cost him 20 grand. And duck in and dive in, spotted, so get moving, there is an artillery on the enemy team. Um, he's probably got enough to worry about down there, but there's no point in taking a chance. T-54 lightweight, scary, tier 8. Um, but he's down to 1, I've got 1 in the pipe, so I'd make the decision here head up and see if I can just finish him off, risk taking a shot myself, and he bounces off, somebody else kills him. Now we're one each at this stage, I'm pinging the map to point out to those guys down in the one square that they might want to think about that a bit, and I do pull up in the bush here to offer them some words of, words of wisdom, slash sarcasm. Um, and two each. Yeah, still looking a bit flaky. I'm not really happy with the way this is lying out. Um, I do seem to be pushing a little bit there though, but this is not the time for me to go and try and do anything clever. There's still lots of tanks on the board. Um, I don't know where that 4190 is and I don't want him to get a shot into me because, as I say, that high explosive plastic makes a mess of things with no armour. Um, but there he is. Bounce another shot off him. Duck and dive, duck and dive. Don't let anybody shoot you, make it difficult for artillery, make it difficult for people shooting at you. And our guys are now pushing up the left here and we're four three up. Okay, we might we might we might do this. It might be okay. Um so I'm still carrying out evasive manoeuvres. Um, and predictably our guys going up the left hand side are taking some casualties because you tend to get people bunched up in that sort of B1, B2 zone on the enemy side, but I think it's time probably to push a little bit further from my spotting, go another square forward, see if I can find these guys. And if you look in the distance, the Ferdinand's only on 322, and I've got five in the clip remaining. I'm thinking, well, I can go and clip that guy. This, this might be time to push on the right. He gets taken out anyway. But even so, all I can see on the map now up that corner is the IS-3. I just need to be careful of the 4190. He pings up on the other side of the map, so I'm clear to engage the IS-3. I dash across here using my speed, and he spots me, and I take the risk here as well. And he does take a shot there, but misses because I'm super fast and he's got super Russian accuracy. At this point, if I pile straight round, um, that's what he's expecting. So I'll handbrake it, because I can, awesome physics. He's gone unspit, unspotted, so I know I can head back around the other side. I'm going to try and mug him off now and get back around behind him. Um, use my clip, use my speed, and 
use his lumberiness against him. Fortunately, gets spotted a little bit earlier than I wanted to, but he's still facing the wrong way. Terrible shot, and I fluff most of these shots. I mean, this next one is terrible, awful angle. Would be much squarer than that shooting heavy. The one at the back's good. Now, as I go away here, I make sure that building's between me and him. All the way, all the way, all the way, and then duck around the corner. So I'm safe while I'm reloading. Safe while I'm getting away from him. Um, my heavies have decided at this point, um, happily, they've decided to join in. They've seen me make the make the dash there. Again, I head back where I came from. I don't go around the big loop where he'll be expecting me. And wait here for the STI to engage it. Um, if you're engaging heavies in something much, much lighter, it's best if they're busy. Um, and it's best if they've just shot. So I'm going to head up behind our STI here, who can wear a couple of shots, although he takes a bit of splash damage from the arty there. And R3's just shot, so I'll go in on him while he's reloading. This time I'll make a much better job of shooting him when he's square. So more of the shots go in. And we could be concerned he might push me in the water here, but don't go around the front. No point shooting him in the front, so I was going to go all the way around the side, but the STI finishes him off. Uh, I was quite lucky the STI didn't finish me off at that point. He could have held his shot another half a second, I thought, but never mind, not dead. Now, the enemy will be expecting me to head off to their corner and spot them up for my guys, um, so that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to head back into town, and the plan at this stage is for me to go up the road, um, use the buildings and bushes that line that for cover, um, and approach, if necessary, from there. But at this point, the uh, our friend the 4190 pops up. Now, he's on half health, I can clip him here. So, get some rounds into him. I'm using auto aim. This is uh, this shoots APCR as standard, so you can get away at short range with auto aim if you don't give things so much lead. Bounce him again. Could have done without that really because I don't want to take a shot from him. Um, get another one. He misses me. Duck round him. Clip him. Take a little bit of grazing damage there, but no, we're all good. So, he's tied it up. That's nice because he's a dangerous tank. Uh, if he knows how to play. Is he any good? Well, I'll look later. Um, so, back to the original plan of heading up the road, using the houses and bushes as cover. Um, it's pretty much a tidying up job now. Um, although our light gets taken out uh, by the Air Panther 2. But we know where everybody is really. Their artillery is dead. Um, and this is where you can really, it's, it's worth keeping something like a T-71 alive until the end game because you can you can use it to mop up beautifully, it's so agile, it's got a good accurate gun um, I'll take a while to aim on the nuts here um, it's a bit like killed steel accidentally at the end there but you know, I'll be paying to do more I should have probably killed the Jagdpanther 2 here but managed to get the gun of that dead tank in the way so I couldn't so I head in on him um, the tiger's down there as well, but it looks like he was at the back of the lump, so probably won't spot me. He's up again. No red outline, he's not going to spot me. Um, I do make a mistake here, though. I don't realise that the Egg Panther is looking straight at me. Um, but I take a bit of a chance running across in front of him regardless. Take a shot from him, but the pen on his APCR is sufficient to, um, to get through his armour and finish him off. Obviously, if at this stage he hadn't died, I would have used the repair kit there and uh, used my ability to get round him. Uh, four in the clip. I'm not even going to clip the tiger with a fresh clip, so there's no point reloading at this stage. But I will get in on him as sneakily as possible, let him know where I'm coming at the last possible moment, an infantry meter so he knows I'm here, and try and shoot him square. Um, but he's pretty much at my mercy now. But I'm shooting him square in the armour. And it's time to reload and do the wing of death. Now this guy knows what he's doing. He's turning his hull and his turret at the same time to try and get as close to me as he can. It's a bit airy a couple of times and I do go a little bit wide at this stage and uh, he starts spinning the other way and I thought I'd cocked it up going over the hill. But he plants one into the hill. Uh, reloaded. I'm going to get round in front of him before he's reloaded. Shoot him square. No. Shoot him in the tracks. Oops. Um, this time, shoot him square in the back, and we light him, and he's dead. Uh, 2,442 damage. Um, so yeah, there you go, let's have a look at the end plates. 
So it's a mastery badge with 6201 XP on a triple, which was quite a nice game. Um, if we look at the second one, I'm top on XP by a good way with four kills. And finally, we made 27,753. So hopefully here I've managed to demonstrate why it's important to keep your light tank intact until the end of the game. Maintain your hit points at the beginning and you can really then use them to get into the bad guys, um, look for an opportunity once the enemy numbers are down a bit, get in and harass heavies and tidy stuff up and be really efficient and get some good rewards. That's all, until next time, thank you for watching.